Welcome to Rewatch. We're on season three, episode 18 of Dave Filoni's Clone Wars. This one's called The Citadel. The Citadel is this big uh, prison area where Evan Peel, the Jedi Evan Peel, has been captured. Anakin and Obi-Wan are going undercover. And uh, they're going to freeze themselves in carbonite, which here's the deal. I get it. So maybe that's where Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back has the idea to freeze Luke Skywalker because he's been frozen before. He knows it works. But then I remember something in Empire Strikes Back when they test it out on Solo. Vader says, is he alive? Did he survive? Well, I don't know, Anakin. What happened when you did it? And why, I mean, now, of course, Han had extended time in Carbonite, which is why he had the temporary blindness. But, and so I'm not, I'm not saying they should have been blind when they unfroze themselves, but knowing that they survived Carbonite, and this must have been a thing that they thought up and already tested before. How come Darth Vader doesn't remember that? And has to ask Calrissian if Han Solo's alive, you know, and Calrissian goes, yeah, barely. You know, Anakin, and Darth Vader should be like, yeah, I know. I did this in the Clone Wars. It's okay. Again, Dave Filoni doesn't care about the movies. Honestly, T canon is F canon, Filoni canon, because it's only in his world that this exists. He contradicts. I'm not even talking about the books. I'm not talking about the EU. He contradicts the movies. So many times we see contradictions between episode three, but we, we're now seeing contradictions against the original trilogy. George doesn't care because George doesn't remember what day it is, much less what happened in his movies. But there wasn't anyone at the table who went, hey, Dave, how would you explain this? I don't care. I just want to make a story. It's all I want to make. Yeah, but fans do care. That's what you've forgotten about. I don't know. I just thought that was stupid. I remember that happening. <clears throat> I totally forgot until now that, that that's how they kind of got in and break into the cit Citadel to rescue Evan Pell. Oh, by the way, of course, Ahsoka is told not to go. She goes anyway. Obi-Wan gives Anakin a look. She sounds a lot like a Padawan I knew, you know. Okay, yada, 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 great. Um, but it's a good thing Ahsoka's there because she's the only one who can fit in this little entryway into the Citadel. Wow, if they didn't bring Ahsoka, their mission would have failed. Why are Obi-Wan and Anakin always held at the heroes? Because it seems like they can't do anything without Ahsoka. Have you noticed that in episodes? Ahsoka is always the one to get them out of trouble. A lot of times she's the one to get them out of trouble when they've been captured or when they need help. Thank goodness Ahsoka disobeyed Anakin, right? Because now she can save the day and save the mission. And, and they do help rescue uh, Evan Pale. But uh, what, what had happened was, um, oh gosh, I just, I just lost his name. Uh, she talks to another Jedi master who says she, she should trust her feelings. And of course, she interprets it as a, hey, let's, you know, let's go. And so she goes anyway on the mission. But once again, thank goodness Ahsoka's there or else we never would have made it. And here it is. It's this forced perspective. Man, Dave Filoni is trying to ram down your throat. Isn't Ahsoka the best? Don't you love her? She saved Anakin and Obi-Wan. She's the best ever. No, she's annoying is what she is. I will say this. Um... Captain Tarkin is with them, and I enjoy that, but uh, I'll talk about that one next time. First off, first off, since this is a part one and part two, maybe part three, um, what did you think of episode 18, The Citadel? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time on Rewatch.